Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Samuel with Cedar Pine Designs and in today's video we will be working on this 1930s English dresser imported over from London. So let's jump straight into this one. So I was scouring Facebook Marketplace to find a smaller project that I can work on and I came across this dresser and I really like the style of it. It was about a 45 minute drive from where I'm at. So I decided to drive out and take a look at it and I really liked it in person. So I decided to bring it home and give this thing a full restoration. So there's not too much wrong with this aside from the finish being very old and dried out and in need of a new finish. Um, some of the drawers were a little hard to open up. They were kind of sticky. Um, this back support was a little loose. And some of the drawer slides on the inside, well, it doesn't technically have drawer slides, but it's guides on the left and right of the drawer. They were missing a few, so later on in the video, you'll see me replacing those. So I always wondered what these little uh, back supports were and come to find out they are actually there to keep things from falling behind the dresser and as you can tell there's these little grooves cut out on the back. Uh, I assume that at one point in time it had a mirror attached to it. Um, I would have gotten rid of the mirror anyway because I don't really uh, like that style. So I'm giving it a really good cleaning with some Dawn dish soap and water just to get all the grime off before I start to strip it down. So I was trying to figure out what kind of wood this was made of. It's got a lot of striping in it and I was told by um, some people that I know that it was made of oak, but I've never really seen oak have this kind of pattern before. Maybe it's um, old growth oak, I'm not sure, but after removing all the drawers, I did use my vacuum cleaner to clean all the dust out of it just so I can give it a really good cleaning and take a look at anything that may need to be repaired and like I said there were a couple of little tracks on the inside that are going to need to be replaced later on. So I decided to start stripping this down with 150 grit sandpaper and my orbital sander just to make quick work of it but this stuff even though it was old and dry it was a little hard to sand it all out. So I decided to use a razor blade to do some scraping. Now I know I can use a carbide scraper, but because some of this was pretty brittle, I didn't want to tear the wood up. So I moved on to removing this small little front trim piece so that way I could clean it up later on. Even though this is a smaller piece, um, the time that it took to refinish this was almost just the same as a larger dresser just because stripping things down all the way to bare wood to give it a nice natural look does take some time but luckily like I said this finish was pretty dried out and brittle so a razor blade made pretty quick work of it but still sanding it down to bare wood. Uh, posed a challenge because the grain on it is really really deep and a lot of the old finish really seeps down into the wood grain as you can tell so I sanded it the best that I could without taking away some of that figure that way it'll just have a really nice contrast Using an orbital sander on edge pieces like this, you want to be really careful not to stay in one spot too long or drift either to the left or right, causing the edges to round out. It just causes a lot of issues and it doesn't look very good. And here you can see this surf prep sander is coming in handy once again for these corner pieces that I couldn't get with my orbital sander and to sand those by hand would have took a lot longer. So I am super happy that I do have that sander. It is a game changer for sure. One of the things that really drew me to this dresser was these iron handles. Um, I'm not sure if they were handmade or what, but they are really, really nice and they really go with that 1930s feel. Um, I just plan on polishing them up later and just trying to remove uh, most of the rust off of them. I really like the patina look and I am not going to be changing those out. 
This is a very common repair that a lot of vintage dressers run into. The dovetail joinery tends to dry out and the glue tends to come apart. So I'm just gonna be re-gluing this and instead of clamping it, what I like to do is use my pin nailer just to hold it in place so that way it has time to dry and I don't have to use a big old clamp just to hold it together. So for this project I decided to use my sandblaster. I get a lot of questions about this thing. It's from Amazon if you just type in sandblaster gun. This is one of the first things that's going to pop up. They do have a version that just has the container on top that you can put sand in but it tends to run out of sand very quickly and they have the version that I have that has the hose that you can stick into a bag or a bucket. I have mine in a bucket of the soda blast material and it makes quick work of removing all of that old finish off of this decorative piece and one thing that I did notice is that it had some like gold paint underneath the finish which was really weird because it didn't look gold at all but I couldn't really sand this down too much and I really did like um, the figure between the fresh wood and the patinaed look on that trim piece it really makes it stand out so now I'm deciding to clear coat this whole thing with Dixie Bell's satin polyurethane um, actually I'm not sure if it's polyurethane I have to look into that but it is a clear coat in a satin finish I decided to go with the raw look I didn't want to stain this and you'll see something later on in the video about a product that I found that I really really like and that I'm gonna be using a lot of moving forward on my project So this is the product that I'm talking about. It's a water-based stain and poly mix made by Bear, and I was very skeptical about it because the color doesn't look anything like what I thought it was gonna look like um, from the picture that it shows on the front. I did do about three to four coats of that, and what it does is it acts as a toner because I really didn't like the consistency of the color of the dresser. It was a little too blonde for the customer's liking, so I used that poly mix to give it a really uniform color the color was pecan and I have to say it came out absolutely amazing um, you'll see later on with the before and after photos uh, what it looked like and this is after using some barkeepers friend to take majority of the rust off and I move over to my benchtop buffer that I just picked up by the way Harbor Freight $69.99 you can't beat that um, I also got some buffing compound and as you can see, I just wanted to remove a lot of the rust and give it a nice polished look. And then I move on to using Howard's Feed and Wax to really saturate the wood on these drawers because they are super, super dry and in desperate need. So to get the correct thickness for the drawer guides on the inside, I use my planer just to plane down a piece of oak down to the thickness and use my chop saw to cut the pieces out. I don't recommend using your chop saw in this fashion, but I really didn't want to pull out my table saw just to make two small little cuts. So I just re-glued this and used my pin nailer to tack it down and hold it in place while it dries. If you watch my videos, everybody knows this is one of my favorite parts, putting back on the drawer handles because it's now time to put the drawers back in so that I can take a step back and take a look at how this piece turned out. So I want to know what you guys think of this project. Me personally, I really like it. Those raw iron handles next to that pecan colored wood are amazing. I really love working on smaller projects like this. So if you guys can please drop some likes, comments, and subscriptions, it would really help out the channel and help me to 
take on more projects like this so that I can take my time on them and fully restore them to their former glory. I would really appreciate it and I cannot wait to see you all on my next project.